Hi, welcome to Conversations in Interventional Cardiology. My name is Andy Goldswag. I'm director of the Cardiac Cath Lab at Bay State Medical Center in Springfield, Massachusetts. I'm the associate editor of JSKY, the Journal of the Society for Cardiovascular Angiography and Interventions. I'm honored to represent JSKY and our editor-in-chief, Dr. Alexandra Lansky. You can find us online at jsky.org, that's J-S-C-A-I dot org, and follow us on Twitter at at myjsky, at M-Y-J-S-C-A-I. JSKY is home to all official Sky documents, and we're here today to discuss an important recent society document published in JSKY entitled Advocacy 101 for Interventional Cardiologists, a Sky Policy Statement. This is the first publication of an official Sky policy statement. I'm joined by an esteemed panel of Sky leaders and healthcare policy experts. Uh, Dr. Lyndon Box, former chair of the Sky Government Relations Committee. He's an interventional cardiologist at West Valley Medical Center in Caldwell, Iowa. Dr. Dupali Tukaye, who is a JSKY editorial board member and the editorial board liaison from the Sky Government Relations Committee. She's an interventional cardiologist at Orion Medical in Houston, Texas. And Dr. Jeff Marshall, former Sky president, lifelong cardiology leader in the field of government relations and chief of the Northside Hospital Cardiovascular Institute in Atlanta, Georgia. So, uh, lady and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I'm going to Turn to Dr. Box to start the conversation. First, congratulations uh, on this important and comprehensive document, the first official Sky policy statement. Now, this uh, this paper provides information and tools to help all interventional cardiologists engage in advocacy. So, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you to take us through the most important points in this paper. I know you've prepared some slides to share. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. Uh, one correction I will say is I work in Idaho, often confused with Iowa, um, but uh, I really appreciate you bringing me on here and, and have to give credit. Uh, you know, Andy was the first author on this paper, so he was very much involved, of course. And then Joaquin Sigarora uh, was a leader on the paper as well, the senior author, and, this, and our Sky staff were very instrumental in getting this project done. So. Um, I was happy to be be part of it and have a chance to talk about it. So, you know, we came up with this idea of doing a statement on, on Advocacy 101, mainly because things kept coming up over and over again. Um, people, as we interacted with other interventionals, uh, we realized that a lot of our colleagues didn't really understand how government controlled healthcare and where the interactions were. And you know, that was understandable. I think before I got involved with Sky and the Government Relations Committee, I didn't really understand that either. So, um, you know, we felt like this was a document that would be really valuable to give people background information over something that controls so much of what we do on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis. Uh, and then also, you know, how does Sky interact with government uh, and represent interventionalists? Uh, a lot of times people you know, members of, of Sky would come to me in my role when I was chairman of the Government Relations Committee and say, we really should do this or that uh, to represent interventional cardiology. And oftentimes what they were suggesting uh, were things we were already doing. And so a lot of it was just trying to, you know, educate our members on, hey, this is how Sky is out there representing you, uh, where, you know, government is involved in infecting our practice. And then also, you know, as people became more knowledgeable, a lot of times they, they would turn around and say, well, you know, how can I get involved in this effort? So we wanted to provide a roadmap to help members get more involved as well. So one of the things that, you know, the paper does try to answer is who does what. I think that we all learned the basics of, you know, the different branches of government when we were back in elementary school. But the different branches of government all have an impact on how we practice medicine and on interventional cardiology. So one of the things we do in the paper is sort of break down who handles what, uh, where, where do we get the rules and regulations that we live under, where do the payments come from, uh, how are those different things affected by government. Uh, this is just a good example of that. So one of the, the hot topics recently has been Medicare cuts and, uh, you know, our reimbursement has not definitely hasn't grown over the past 20 years and has slowly been going downward as far as what we get paid and 
there's a lot of acronyms involved and there's a lot of different steps in the process for how our payments are determined. Uh, and so we break that down in the paper. This is just one of the figures from the paper that really shows the, uh, the different steps in developing a you know, CPT code, which is how we code for what we do, all the way to the end of the process where we're actually paid a dollar value for doing it. And here is just a, a list. It's not an exclusive list, but it really goes through a lot of the things that Sky is already doing and does on a consistent basis to represent our members. Um, and, you know, we, we lobby the legislature, um, you know, at the national level, and we coordinate with Sky PAC to help fund uh, some of those efforts, primarily by making donations to, to members of Congress in a bipartisan format, uh, so that we at least get an audience with them and we have a chance to talk about what interventional cardiologists uh, need to better serve their patients. Uh, we've been involved in the court uh, court system. We've been involved with regulators on the, the side of the executive branch. Uh, even outside of official government, uh, we've been involved with payers and large organizations as far as their coverage determinations. Um, so these are a lot of things that we're already doing and doing on a regular basis. And so this document really kind of uh, fleshes that out a little bit so that people have a better understanding of, of what we do. Um, and then, you know, the final part of the paper is kind of divided up into these three sections. And uh, the final section has to do with how people can get involved. Um, you know, and this is a top 10 list. There's tons of ways to get involved. Um, one of the ones that I really want to call people's attention to is the grassroots campaign. So you can uh, go to the Sky website and learn about grassroots campaigns that are ongoing. And basically, it makes it super easy for you to send a message to your member of Congress uh, regarding key issues that affect interventional cardiology. Um, we can also get you more involved at the committee level. So whenever the committee applications uh, go out, and that usually takes place in November, uh, we encourage people that have an interest in government relations to please apply to be part of that. And one of the most important things that you could do is if you do get a survey from the RUC, so after having looked at this paper, you'll know what the RUC is and, and why it's so important. And if you get a survey in your email from the RUC, uh, we always want you to complete that survey. Um, and so that's a very important thing that if you take nothing else away from the paper that you realize the importance of that. Um, so, you know, that was really the, the outline of the paper as far as the key sections. Um, we'll, you know, love to hear what others had to think about it. Well, Linda, thank you very much. That's a, a great overview of the, the paper uh, and how the paper really uh, reviews the steps uh, by which healthcare is regulated and healthcare payments are regulated, uh, and then the ways Sky and particularly all Sky members can get involved. Uh, I have a question I want to direct toward uh, Dr. Kaye, if I can, uh, and that is that many medical societies uh, publish societal documents, clinical data, guidelines, and, and Sky certainly uh, excels in those areas, but policy statements are new and very important territory for Sky and, and for the field of interventional cardiology in general. <clears throat> My question is, why is it important that uh, Sky publish policy statements like this one? What's the uh, the purpose and the utility of all this? Uh, that's such a great question, Andy. Uh, we as interventional cardiologists, we are trained to take care of patients, and we are so good at advocating for our patients' bedside and cat lab. And, and it takes us a little while in practice to realize that a lot of our decisions are actually in, influenced by policies and decisions made by policymakers and people who are not even physicians. And at the end of it, you are now dealing with uh, a situation which you know is not optimal, but at the same time, you don't know how to fix it. And uh, advocating uh, for healthcare for our ourselves, our patient to improve access, uh, it's a very complex process and it takes a while to learn. And, and from my personal experience, I started when I was in, in third year of my cardiology fellowship. And, and uh, it's been a few years. And even now, I'm, I'm not that good at it, but I've learned a lot. 
And I, I know it's a tedious process. And, and a document like this, this is like a phenomenal guidebook. Like if I had this back then, I'd be like, oh, maybe I could have done something more. Uh, and, and for somebody who has never done this before is in a place where they want to advocate for B, be it to practice, continuing practicing in that place, continuing getting more uh, healthcare benefits for, for the patients who are there. This is a good starting point as to like, hey, who to contact and how to go about it. So in, in, a, in a way, this document is like an evidence-based document because this is based on years of work that we have done and we know what works and what doesn't work and we have put that in. So, hey, you want to do a complex PCI, go, go, go pull up one of those, uh, you know, bifurcation documents and, hey, you want to advocate for yourself, for your patient, then, then this would be your document to go to. So I, I think this is, a, this is a very remarkable achievement from the Government Relations Committee. Well, thank you. I, I agree 100%. I also think it's important uh, that Sky let Sky members know what's going on. Uh, communication with the membership is, is so important. Sky does so many things in the realm of advocacy, uh, in the legislative branch, in the executive branch, in terms of uh, regulation, with payers, uh, with industry. And uh, I think a lot of that uh, is sort of taken for granted. Members don't realize how much time, effort, funds go into all that. And so, uh, you know, laying it out like this, uh, I, I hope members uh, get it, they pick it up, they read it, uh, and they are inspired to get involved. Dr. Marshall, I've got a question for you. This, uh, this document obviously provides quite a bit of detailed background about the healthcare system. It's a how-to guide for advocates, uh, but soup to nuts, you know, you're leading a number of advocacy initiatives and you have uh, led many over the years. I wonder if I could ask you to comment on uh, what you think the major advocacy issues are facing interventional cardiologists today, what, what our stances are, uh, what we can do. Uh, and I'm just gonna, as some prompts, throw out things like PCI coding or evaluation, prior authorization, Medicare funding. Yeah, uh, Andy, first, thanks for having me. Uh, uh, the audience, you know, you have uh, three authors here, and I would like to congratulate e each of y'all because this is really a landmark paper, I believe, for Sky. It's, uh, it's kind of forging a new area in Sky. We've done a lot of government relations work, and you you mentioned much of it. And the three of y'all have certainly, with others, been leaders in that. And uh, I congratulate you on the paper. I think Sky faces a number of, if you will, external threats. Uh, sometimes they come from government. Uh, sometimes they come uh, from the media. Uh, and those two um, entities have really challenged interventional cardiologists over the years. You mentioned prior authorization. Um, you know, this is a construct by uh, insurance companies basically to make sure that they can control throughput, uh, even for patients that really need cath and PCI. And it's become a, uh, a national uh, rally cry, not just for interventional cardiologists, but for all cardiologists. And Sky has actually made inroads in this, both nationally and locally. Remember that the uh, some of these decisions are made by Medicare intermediaries, and those are regional companies that administer CMS payments uh, around the country. And some states have been very successful uh, at taking on prior authorization. I'd also like to say that, uh, you know, coding has become very complex. One thing I took away from this article is that the way we get paid is profoundly complex. And I think that's really a theme throughout the article. And y'all do a great job of untangling and simplifying that uh, for everybody. And it is an alphabet soup of acronyms. 
And if you want to know what those are, read this paper. Keep it in your back pocket. It really is going to be a treatise that people will use for years coming. And if you look at some uh, some historical things, and I'm old enough to know some historical stuff, um, basically, when Andreas Grunzig uh, was doing PCI at Emory after he came from Switzerland, um, compensation for PCI, the professional component, nothing to do with the hospital, but the professional component was probably between $2,500 and $3,000. You know, in 2023, the compensation is around 350 bucks. Now, that's because of the complexity of way, the way that we're paid. The, the size of the pie for compensation for everything is not getting bigger. So, for instance, Linda was talking about understand the ruck. When our experts from Sky, and we really are some of the national experts on the ruck, when they go to the ruck to argue basically for us being compensated fairly when we get paid a little more somebody else gets paid a little less it's just not the right system and i'm not sure we'll ever change that but uh sky has done a great deal in advocacy uh every interventionist that's listening to this was facing huge cuts last year in the government relations committee from sky with others but led by Sky, actually abated uh, a huge cut for interventional cardiologists. So those are just a few of the things I think that uh, Sky is working on and a few of the things that the Government Relations Committee and this paper addresses in detail. There are really a lot of big issues out there. Thank you so much for summarizing those. Uh, as a sort of a parting question, a parting shot to everybody, I wonder if I can ask uh, each of you, uh, think about it for a second to just uh, tell our listeners what the top or most important thing they can do, uh, you know, some easy thing that they can do to be an advocate uh, and to help the interventional cardiology community. Uh, and I don't want to take what anybody's thinking, but to give you a second to think, uh, I will start. And I'll say, I think the most important thing everyone can do is to form some sort of relationship with your local legislators, and particularly your uh, congressional representatives, uh, and their offices are the easiest, right? Uh, whether it's send them an email, uh, make a phone call, get on the record, let them know that there's an interventional cardiologist, an interventional cardiologist in their district uh, who has an opinion about something, and that will prompt them to stay informed and potentially, when they have questions about issues, to come right back to you, because you can be their expert. So uh, I think the top thing uh, I want people to take away from this is uh, reach out, form a relationship uh, with your local U.S. representative. I think another thing the article brings out is advocacy with the media. And the media over the history of interventional cardiology has hurt heart cardiology with lots of headlines that were really uh, only partially true. And I think every Sky member should be an advocate with their local uh, media, and even in small ways, and reaching out uh, to the media and letting them know that you're available. And, and be an advocate with our patients. Try to teach our patients, um, whether it's going to a church or a synagogue or a temple, and, and teaching people about what heart disease is and how interventional cardiology, especially in STEMI care, saves lives. I think being an advocate like that for our patients and being an educator, which is one of the tenets of SKY, right? Education, advocacy, those things are important for every SKY member to know. And I know lots of y'all do that, but I would just um, suggest that everybody advocate with the media and with their patients, be a great teacher. Um, I would say if you're if you are somebody who's very busy and don't have a lot of time, and maybe an introvert, don't want to like face to face have conversations or or phone calls, then then go to the MySky website uh, and and do the grassroots campaign letters. 
uh, whenever they come out, because that's a very easy way to reach out to your legislator. The issues are already built in and the template is ready to go. So it's not like you have to struggle a whole lot to, to communicate your point. If you want to edit something in that letter, feel free to do so. But that is probably one of the easiest way to get involved is participate in the grassroots com campaigns. It takes about 30 seconds to do it, and it's a very effective way. Dr. Boggs, take us home. Well, I just wanted to bring out the opportunity for all members to donate to Sky PAC. Um, I think that's one thing that as I've talked to other members of Sky that I've encountered uh, a lot of discomfort. You know, people aren't necessarily used to giving money uh, for political purposes. And I think if you take the time, there we go, show me the money. Uh, if you take the time to read the paper, uh, you'll really understand the nuances of why that's so important. Uh, and how we at Sky really work to be good stewards of that money so that its you know, intended purpose is realized of trying to increase the voice of interventional cardiology so that we're heard. Uh, and I think an important aspect of that is realizing that, you know, compared to other professional societies that uh, are similar in size, uh, subspecialties, we actually have a pretty small pack. It's grown a lot over the past couple of years, but we have a lot of work to do. Um, and so that's one area that, you know, if you don't want to do anything else because you think you're too busy, you can always donate some money. And we can assure you that, you know, Sky's Government Relations Committee, the members of the Sky PAC Committee and, and Sky staff will put that money to good use. Wonderful. Okay. So in summary, we're going to educate our patients, we're going to get involved in grassroots campaigns, specifically on the Sky website, and we're going to contribute to SkyPAC. Thank you so much, Dr. Box, Dr. Kaya, Dr. Marshall. We're thrilled to include this important paper in the July 2023 issue of JSky and to share this discussion with this incredible panel with the Sky community. Uh, please take Advocacy 101 to heart, read the document, get involved, and also please follow JSky. You can submit your own work to JSky. JSky is the official journal of Sky, and you can follow us at jsky.org, J-S-C-A-I.org, and on Twitter at, at myjsky, at M-Y-J-S-C-A-I. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much, Andy.